There are several successful people in the world that are associated with captivating charisma, such as the ex-president of the United States of America, Barack Obama, Johnny Depp, and Tom Holland, aka the Spider-Man. Although it's quite difficult to know the exact correlation, it's fair to say charisma plays a big part in our success. Whether in business, relationships, and career, we always deal with people. Lots of people. And usually, they have different types of personality that we need to play along with in order to be able to work successfully with them. For instance, in a job interview, apart from having the skill set for the job, I think charisma plays a big role in getting it. Being charismatic usually involves speaking with confidence and without mumbling too much, which shows uncertainty. And charisma in relation to confidence is often a good sign that a person has the positive attitude to deal with any kind of difficulties in life and perhaps even more importantly, the communication skills that enable him to work well with other people in a group setting. Likewise, in a relationship, having charisma often shows that one is able to communicate effectively what his concerns are while also taking the other person's feelings into consideration. So charisma is probably something we all want to aspire of possessing if we want to succeed in all arenas of life. And the good news is, a person is not just born with charisma, which we either have or have not. But a person is charismatic only because he practices developing his charisma consistently. So what is charisma? From my experience of observing a few charismatic people, usually there are several things in common with them one of which is magnetism. There seems to be a magnetic center within them that draws other people in and makes them want to follow them everywhere they go. The reason why some religious leaders have managed to gain such a loyal following is because they also possess this magnetic center. Now, throughout history, we are all aware that there are two types of leaders, the good ones and the bad ones. Being successful at your job although it might play a part, is not usually indicative of the amount of charisma you possess. The good leaders might lack charisma, while the bad ones might possess abundance of it. Unfortunately, such the case that the latter might even go on to become more successful and popular than the former. Why? Magnetism. We are intuitively drawn to charismatic people regardless of what negative impact they might have in our lives. There is a certain sense of danger connected to charismatic people, which often lies in our lack of control over ourselves every time we are around them. It's almost like falling madly, blindly in love with someone we know deep down is bad for us, but can't seem to stop thinking about him. Now, I'm not here to justify deceiving other people solely for our selfish needs, but sometimes we have to play by the rules of the world, that is, Success in every level is likely to be built around convincing other people in our ideals. Here's some tips on how to develop our charisma. Being charismatic always involves being confident in ourselves. Now, in today's definitions, being confident is usually construed as being the loudest and the most boisterous in the room. Now, that's not always true, since language is often a poor barometer of one's internal power. We all have met that one person who tends to be the life wire of the party. But when more serious problems arise in our lives, he's usually not the first person upon whom we depend for help. Normally, he uses words only to fill in the empty gaps between sentences for fear of awkward silences. And without realizing it, the more he speaks, the more diluted the power of his words becomes, and the less attractive he is in the eyes of others. In any case, charisma has something to do not with the number of smart-sounding words one possesses, but with being absolutely convinced in the truth of it. Sometimes we can say absolutely nothing which expresses the truth better than any other way. Sometimes we can say the most ridiculous stuff, which if done with total conviction, can still have the power to mesmerize. 
The charismatic person is usually very well versed in the psychology of men. In relation to one another, human beings all have a desire to be understood. We all have experienced the childhood traumas of being left out alone and isolated from the world one way or another. It could be a playground situation in which no other kids want to play with us. Or it could be a situation in which someone calls us weird and looks at us funny when we do something out of the ordinary. These experiences remain with us until the present day of our lives and continue to shape our preferences when interacting with other human beings. Those who have the ability to attract a lot of people usually recognize the human need to be understood. They have felt such a need to be understood themselves and therefore put themselves in other people's shoes most of the time. They tend to listen more to other people's concerns instead of talking about their own and are generally more interested in the stories of someone else's life. Now, genuine interest is extremely difficult to fake. People have an almost paranormal ability to sense our sincerity in these conversations, from the way we slouch on the chair or the way we lean in close to listen better. Therefore, it requires more than just an ordinary motivation to listen to the other person with our complete attention. Often, it requires us to change the gestalt of our thinking towards these interactions. How does a charismatic person become so good in the art of communication? In order to truly be interested in the stories the other person has to offer, one needs to understand that what he receives from an interaction could benefit him. The other person might have known something useful, and therefore, listening to him gives us the opportunity to learn something new that's otherwise inaccessible to us. So, developing our charisma practically allows us to kill two birds with one stone. We can learn new knowledge from others while also making them feel good about themselves and therefore enhancing our relationships. But unfortunately, we human beings are like pufferfish that makes themselves bigger to deter potential enemies. This ancient survival mechanism in motion, of which we are mostly unaware throughout our waking life, breeds in us the constant craving for attention. We can't afford to stop talking about ourselves, as if we are afraid that once we let go of the mic, the other person would never give it back. But if we want to learn to be more charismatic, we should be aware of this underlying pattern that controls our everyday behaviors and let the other person take center stage instead. Make her feel comfortable around us. Lead her on with more questions. Talk about everything you know she's interested in. More often than not, it's very likely she would return us the same favors. In this day and age, most human beings are living on autopilot, repeatedly doing what they did the day before. We tend to live on the assumption that every day is just like any other day. Today is no different than yesterday, and tomorrow will be just like today. Nothing will be different. That's the state of mind in which most people reside, hopefully waiting for one random event that can radically change their outlook towards life. Now, this is where charisma could come in. Charisma can be likened to a big ball of meteorite crashing down on Earth, shaking the whole population into a sudden alert attention. Such an incident will not happen every day, but once it does, it's likely to be ground-shattering. Being around a charismatic person is likely not to have the destructive impact of a big meteorite falling down on us, but it sure does a similar job of waking us up from the ordinary mundane existence. One of the personality traits normally associated with charisma is the ability to think differently. He's able to express his thoughts independent to the norm, not caring one bit whether it might negatively shape others' perceptions of him. What matters to him is being himself at all times. Have you ever met a person who acts and behaves so strangely, and yet is so refreshing to be around with? Very likely, that's because he makes you feel unafraid to be yourself. This fear of being ourselves comes from the expectations of the society that regards being authentic as being rebellious. Our society nowadays is built upon economic values which favor industrial efficiency, 
in which there is no place for an authentic individual who moves independently to the flow of the collective. The dilemma that most people experience is the constant tug of war between the individual and the collective. The individual might have his own desires and preferences that run counter to the agenda of the collective humanity. So human beings are left with two options, to be accepted by the world and live a boring life or to live as a free man and be alienated from civilization. When you meet someone who has transcended this inner conflict and found his own freedom, it's impossible not to be drawn to him and be inspired. To see one live so freely and boundlessly represents to us the possibility of doing likewise. In dealing with the subject of charisma, there seems to be a preoccupation with the other person on whom we want to make an impact. Often, it tends to make us forget that first we need to love and respect the only person that matters, that is ourselves. As the old cliche goes, love ourselves first before we can expect anybody to love us. Charisma is often the byproduct of living life authentically, the only way we know how. If we notice some of the most charismatic people in the world, they are not hell-bent on making other people love them, they simply don't care about it. They just go on living their life, and if anybody wants to be a part of it, it's just an added perk of being happy in their own skin. Thank you for watching.